Based on the report that we have from the Department of Justice, from GSA, uh, from the FBI, from FEMA, uh, from the Secret Service, uh, from the Marshal Service, uh, from all the relevant federal agencies that might have a role here in dealing with this incident, that we have a very good uh, federal response in hand. The federal government has activated an emergency response plan that uh, uh, we train for and that we have in place so that we can coordinate interagency response to incidents like this. Uh, the Department of Justice uh, had already responded, had FBI personnel in place, a variety of law enforcement uh, efforts underway. They've established a mobile command center in Oklahoma City with uh, FBI, FEMA, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms, the Marshal Service, and GSA in place uh, to give updated information to, to folks here in Washington. The President has directed uh, for the emergency response efforts that James Lee Witt, uh, the director of the Federal Emergency Management Agency, uh, will go to Oklahoma City to coordinate the emergency response. So we'll have DOJ coordinating uh, the various law enforcement efforts that will be underway and FEMA responding to the emergency situation uh, in place. Mr. Panetta has been briefing the president regularly. The president, I expect, like many Americans, has been uh, watching the developments as he sees them on television and uh, getting updates from the chief of staff as we go along. Uh, I'd ask that you, for inquiries about the various uh, things going on in Oklahoma City related to law enforcement, you stay in close contact with Carl Stern over at Justice and for the work that FEMA will be coordinating that uh, Maury Goodman will be a good point of contact. They'll be coordinating some of the interagency uh, public affairs efforts as we go along. Well, we know very little hard information. We've heard a lot of different reports. We're getting good information from the field, but uh, they're at the very early stages uh, of investigating this incident, and it's way too early at this point to draw any conclusions about what has happened in Oklahoma City. Clearly, there's been a devastating uh, explosion that's occurred at this uh, federal building, but the cause of it is unknown. And those responsible are unknown at this point, and uh, we'll have to develop that very carefully in the course of the coming hours and days. Uh, we don't have a reliable one that's being uh, worked on. I, I, again, stay in contact with the local authorities on the ground there who will have the best information as they get it available. Yeah. Has, has security been heightened in federal buildings and here in the White House? Well, we would take at any moment like this. You're seeing now a variety of sporadic reports from federal buildings around the country that are uh, getting uh, alleged uh, threats. And, uh, you know, as federal agencies do, we will respond appropriately. We have directed uh, that federal buildings take uh, any necessary precautions just to uh, respond as they would in a, in a routine way anytime we sense that there is some reason to believe that there's uh, an incident that's occurred that raises the level of threat. Any reports of a threat in Oklahoma City that may have preceded this? They are uh, looking now through everything available uh, in the information that was available to the federal government to see. We don't have a concrete answer. We're not aware of any at this point. Are you aware of any kind of uh, conspiracy or plot uh, that would bring not, this? We're at the very early stages of investigating this incident, and it would be way too early to develop any good information on anything like that yet, Joe. Mike, in terms of the response here at the White House, do, when these uh, agency, interagency groups start up, is there a process <coughs> where they automatically do things because the president jumped in himself and said something must be done? There is a, there is a good federal emergency management plan in effect, uh, which includes you know, a White House component that the chief of staff is now executing at the direction of the president. Uh, obviously, in this situation, the president wants to make sure that the White House uh, stays right on top of an uh, administration response to make sure that the appropriate things are being done. But we're satisfied in large part because of our experience in dealing with incidents uh, of this nature or related types of incidents. So we've got good planning in effect, and that's all underway at this point. Yes, it's it's automatically it, uh, there are a lot of things the, the federal agencies like the FBI, like Justice, uh, like GSA, uh, did have planning in effect that kicked in automatically and here at the White House uh, we established a, a small interagency working group to make sure we monitored 
all the proper developments from these various agencies. So this affects the security plan for the White House, the future plan? It's entirely too early to say. That was a review that was still at the Treasury Department, and uh, we'd be jumping to conclusions if we suggested there was anything about today's incident in Oklahoma City that had any bearing on that security the review. Are you going to make a statement before the end of the day on this? I suspect the President will. I think later, written, or later in the day, I think he, uh, he wants to make sure that people have got the best information available to him, you and I suspect later in the day he'll be here, yeah. Security here at the White House, have you done? We've taken precautions that we would normally take uh, following an incident like this, yes. <coughs> yeah, Mike, Mike, you talked about uh, persons unknown responsible for this. Is that, can you confirm that this actually was a bomb, and can you say what kind of bomb it was? I would hesitate to do that because there are people on the ground that are looking very carefully at exactly that type of question. I can tell you that uh, law enforcement officials are investigating it as a crime scene, uh, and they are, you know, for that reason, all the relevant law enforcement agencies are uh, in place and responding. Yeah, Ann. Was this developed after the World Trade Center or in recent Well, there, there has, there's a variety of that type of planning that has been in place over time. Uh, I'm not sure when it came into effect here. I haven't participated in another federal agency. I know that they routinely update a lot of their planning activities, and I think they do uh, build on past experience. References to procedures normally taken after an incident such as right. this. I don't recall x-raying of lunches and bags and stuff after the World Trade Center or after any other incident uh, in recent years. Maybe I just didn't notice, but isn't this some new level that we've not seen before? I, th I think we are you know, taking precautions as you would expect us to take following an incident of this nature and following uh, uh, threats that have been going to some isolated federal uh, facilities around the yeah. country. I'm not aware of any threat here directed yeah. against the White House. I'm not, uh, I don't know entirely about all of the federal installations around Washington. I only know about here at the White House. Yeah. Is it likely that the President will want to visit the site at some point? Oh, I, uh, he wants to make sure that the proper law enforcement is in place and that the right emergency response is taking place. It's way too early to make judgments about that. Can you confirm that they found an unexploded bomb or an unexploded device? I cannot. How yeah. many, how many uh, threats have been received? The Oklahoma governor's office says at least 19 people are dead, hundreds of others injured, and rescuers continue to search for survivors in the rubble of the AP Murrah Federal Building in Oklahoma City. A car bomb went off shortly after 9 a.m. local time this morning. The huge blast demolished walls and pancake floors into one another. Shockwaves were felt as many as 50 miles away. And this is how local television stations reported the story. <laughs> Alfred Murray Federal Building. It is an amazing site. It's a six-story building, and one half of the building is sheared away, the entire side. You can see debris and pieces of the construction hanging down the entire six stories. It is, it's as if somebody came and sheared off an entire half of the building. Below it in the parking lot, all the cars are damaged, and they are smoking. Now, what is really devastating is in an entire block surrounding this building, we are seeing injured people everywhere, literally, literally dozens of people that are bleeding. Some of them, you can't even make them out. They uh, are so badly injured, and ambulance crews are just working as fast and furious as they can, trying to get to these people and put them on stretchers and get them to the hospital. They are just working as fast as they can. We've seen a number of small children being carried, bleeding heavily from the face. Everywhere you look, the buildings have been destroyed. The Journal Record building across the street, many of these, the, every window is gone, and there is debris hanging out of the windows. It is really a chaotic situation. Many people are run to, running around trying to find friends and co-workers. The streets are filled with people, and the streets are just filled with debris. Oh, I don't believe this. This is just coming to get I can't believe sympathy. this is happening. I got a daughter who works out here. Oh, my God. The federal parole officer. Do you have a daughter in there that might be there? Yeah, I, I haven't heard nothing from them. I, I, I just got down here. I'm trying to find out. But they, they're running. They're... Oh, Somebody call the police. Somebody call the police. Somebody call the police. There was a boom. 
boom and the building shook and the ceiling fell in and the walls fell in and there was nothing left. Uh, the whole floors crashed in. As soon as it did, I went outside, looked around, and then I seen uh, buildings all over the place. Look like they were hit. The floor from above went down and flat and just, it just kept falling. It was a horrible noise. Horrible noise. What happened to you, sir? <laughs> we were on the fifth floor, the three of us. When, it, when whatever happened, happened. You were on the first floor? Third, fifth floor. Fifth floor. You went under a then. desk, right? Huh? You went under a table? Yeah, I went under a table when the ceiling started to fall in. And, uh, that's what saved me, I guess. My floor was okay, and the ceiling had come down, but there was still concrete above, so it was just a corner of the office that was left that we were in. Everybody else that we worked with is gone. I thought it was an earthquake, and it was almost like slow motion. Because of this guy, I might have lost my three-year-old daughter and my husband and my four-year-old. Whoever did this, I hope you're happy. It's uh, 4 o'clock Central Time now in Oklahoma City. We have been following along with KFOR, one of our affiliates, throughout the day. We thank them for their contributions to this uh, live coverage, which will continue. Uh, we're going to join KFOR now for the latest on the Oklahoma City disaster. Well, uh, everybody is getting involved now, the Geological Survey and uh, everybody else feeling this blast today. And... Uh, we're, again, we're still waiting for official counts to come in. We're still standing at 19 dead, and we hope it stays there because it's too high as it is already. 17 children involved, but we keep hearing it's going to go higher. We almost, almost certainly. Let's yeah. go back to Tara Bloom again. When we last joined Tara, Tara has been kind of on the other side of this entire issue, and that is uh, following police along as, on their investigation. It has led her to a South Side motel. Let's see if uh, where things stand now, Tara. Well, Devin, I'm at the Plaza Inn on Southeast 29th and I-35. I just a uh, couple minutes ago finished talking to one of the employees that the FBI has been questioning. She says since Monday night there have been three Arabic men st staying at the hotel and that they left this morning. Now, she says that they were dressed in Arabic clothes with a burnous, which is that long veil on, on their head with the band around the forehead that you see the traditional garment. And uh, FBI have been questioning her, and she's been looking in the records, trying to find their registration, what names they registered under. Now, um, we have seen uh, a couple of the FBI agents come out. One was wearing blue plastic gloves. So I'm um, guessing from that that they are taking fingerprints and searching the room that the three men stayed at. Now, apparently two men were staying in one room, and one man was uh, had registered two rooms to himself. But she thinks that the three men were together. Once again, they um, checked out of the plaza in this morning. Devin. Okay, Tara, thanks very much. Uh, intriguing in the, t in, in the mystery of it all, though hard to believe that anybody who was going to be behind something like this we might stay be around. foolish enough to yeah. A, stay around, or, or B, be walking around in very traditional Mideastern garb right. for a couple of days beforehand. However, uh, since we were talking with Terry again, we will go ahead and repeat one more time for you the All Points Bulletin from the Oklahoma City Police. They're looking for two, perhaps three, uh, most likely two Middle Eastern men uh, last seen wearing blue jogging suits and traveling in a brown pickup truck with tinted windows. Uh, there you see a, a printed out version of, in fact, this is a little more exact than uh, of what we've had already. Apparently the first one, 20 to 25 years old, the second one a little older, 35 to 38 years old. The third suspect, if indeed there is one, would have been uh, simply a driver in this, uh, in this entire incident and we should keep in mind we don't know necessarily that the people that they are looking for at the uh, plaza inn in southeast oklahoma city are necessarily what we would term suspects yet they are people however though that the police would very much like to talk to and question we need to talk to david payne right now he's down at the family assistance center david what can you tell us from there well i'm at uh, northwest 36 and walker and i've been here about 20 minutes or so when i got here hardly anybody was here at all but about the last 15 minutes i tell you what, a lot of folks uh, driving up pulling pulling in and getting out, uh, kids walking up with uh, parents, loved ones, and friends. 
and it's really a depressing sight here. I, I can just, that's all I can say for the most part. People, they show up here, they take an application out for the most part in a description, and they write down what their loved one looked like or what their uh, relative or their friend looked like. And uh, this, is, this isn't where you come to find out whether they've, they've died or they're injured. This is just to kind of connect things together with, uh, the, with what you fill out and with what the, uh, the, uh, the medical people have and they kind of meet hands so later on this makes it a much easier process to find out whether you have indeed lost a loved one or, or a relative but again a very depressing sight here but folks that are still worried and and are looking for that that person can can, can start the process now by uh, coming out here and it's again northwest 36 and walker and there's counselors here and they can talk to you and then there's also people that you and there's sheets of information you fill out and again, describe the, the one that you are looking for. And uh, again, when you come out, they can't tell you whether they are they are deceased or not. It's not that kind of a deal. You just come out and it just kind of makes the process a little bit shorter and a little bit easier. So again, a depressing sight here, but uh, we'll stay here and uh, we'll get back with you a little bit later. And David, are you still with us there? Yes, I am. Da so this, I mean, that is the first place for people to go to, to get themselves into the process here, correct? That's right. This, this is the uh, first and I think so far the only place here in Oklahoma City. It's, it's a big facility. It's a big church. And uh, again, come in on the southeast entrance here, and it's, it's plenty big to hold uh, uh, several people, of course, and numerous people. And uh, people, as, I, as I'm talking to you right now, I can still see them walking up the sidewalk. So uh, I've seen fathers with little girls and little boys coming up, and it's just, it's just terrible. I mean, they're just looking for uh, their, their, lost, their, their uh, lost loved one. Okay, David, thank you very much. Let's go back to uh, Dr. Spangler, who's in our newsroom. You know, Doctor, the thing that cuts so deep here is the uh, death and injury to children, and I know you were involved in a lot of that today. Can you hear me, Doctor? Doctor, can you hear us there yet? Okay, we're okay. still uh, some microphone processing. problems there. Okay, we'll be getting back to him in just a little bit. Uh, another reminder, though, for people who are looking for ways to help, uh, most of the blood banks that we have talked to uh, are full and uh, have really all the help that they need at this point. However, still O positive and O negative blood, I believe, were still uh, what we were hearing that the Red Cross needed. Other smaller things, uh, feed the children. If you would like to go down, uh, drop by them. Uh, their headquarters at 333 North Meridian uh, and donate food. Feed the children will then take all of that food downtown to help with all of the rescue efforts and uh, uh, all of the family members of victims who are still down there waiting. There will be a, a large feeding task uh, to go on as we get closer to the dinner hour down there. So if you'd like to help, feed the children is one possibility. Also, if you're a restaurant owner, uh, feed the children will pick up uh, restaurant meals and deliver them downtown as well. 942-0228 is the phone number to call if you'd like to get involved with that. And what a poignant sight that is. Uh, a little girl with a blood-streaked face and uh, a scene that we are seeing far, far too often this afternoon. Dr. Sven That's KFOR in Oklahoma City. A joint venture today between CNN and our affiliate there are doing yeoman's work and providing uh, information and uh, remarkable videotape. We have official uh, confirmed dead now in Oklahoma City of 19, more than 200 injured and the rescue operation continues. CNN will take a break. We'll be right back. My allergies were terrible. No one medicine seemed right for me. Benadryl worked okay, but sometimes made me drowsy. My prescription medicine didn't make me drowsy, but wasn't always strong enough. Then my allergist recommended Dimatap. Compared to Benadryl, Dimatap is less likely to cause drowsiness. And he told me something else. A recent study showed its antihistamine provided better relief than a leading prescription. Dimatap. It's just right for me. Dimatap Extend Tabs. The right allergy medicine for you. Gramercy Press in cyberspace. We can set up our own bookstore on the internet. Click the book they want right on the screen. To talk with reporters in just about uh, five minutes now. So while we wait, we want to bring you some more of the... This is CNN Breaking News. The bombing in Oklahoma City was an attack on innocent children and defenseless citizens. It was an act of cowardice and it was evil. The United States will not tolerate it. And I will not allow the people of this country to be intimidated by evil cowards. I have met 
with our team, which we assembled to deal with this bombing. And I have determined to take the following steps to assure the strongest response to this situation. First, I have deployed a crisis management team under the leadership of the FBI, working with the Department of Justice, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, military and local authorities. We are sending the world's finest investigators to solve these murders. Second, I have declared an emergency in Oklahoma City. And at my direction, James Lee Witt, the director of the Federal Emergency Management Agency, is now on his way there to make sure we do everything we can to help the people of Oklahoma deal with the tragedy. Third, we are taking every precaution to reassure and to protect people who work in or live near other federal facilities. Let there be no room for doubt. We will find the people who did this. When we do, justice will be swift, certain, and severe. These people are killers, and they must be treated like killers. Finally, let me say that I ask all Americans tonight to pray, to pray for the people who have lost their lives, to pray for the families and the friends of the dead and the wounded, to pray for the people of Oklahoma City. May God's grace be with them. Meanwhile, we will be about our work. Thank you. This has been a tragic and heartbreaking day. I can tell you this. The FBI and the law enforcement community will pursue every lead and use every possible resource to bring the people responsible to justice. The FBI has established a command post in Oklahoma City, and it is in 24-hour contact with FBI headquarters command post and with the Department of Justice. Four FBI special agents in charge have been dispatched to the scene to provide 24-hour operation of the command post. The FBI has sent four evidence response teams and explosive ordnance teams to Oklahoma City. Five of the very best FBI agents experienced in this type of investigation are arriving in Oklahoma City, as have bomb technicians from Boston, Chicago, Miami, San Francisco, and Los Angeles. Thirteen members of the Rapid Start team will be entering data as the evidence is collected. Fifty more agents are available for arrival tomorrow, and more will be used as needed. The FBI and federal law enforcement have received superb cooperation from local authorities in Oklahoma City, and the federal law enforcement agencies are working together. The ATF has sent two national response teams and a mobile command center. It has three explosive technicians and three laboratory technicians in Oklahoma City, and it is prepared to send 20 to 25 more personnel tomorrow. The Secret Service is also sending explosives experts. In addition, the Oklahoma National Guard has been deployed to assist in control of the area and the evacuation of the injured. The United States Army has deployed the 61st Ordnance Detachment with a robot from Fort Sill, Oklahoma. The Tulsa Police Department has deployed two bomb technicians, two dogs, and a robot. And the FEMA is playing a major role in aid and assistance. We cannot tell how long it will be before we can say with certainty what occurred and who is responsible. But we will find the perpetrators and we will bring them to justice. Have, have, you, put out, have you put out a uh, bulletin seeking some particular suspects and what can you tell us about that? There are reports that uh, there are descriptions of a couple of people who are seeking. What I can say about all evidentiary issues and all leads is that it, it would be it would hinder the investigation to discuss any action that we are taking in pers 
pursuant to the leads, but we are pursuing absolutely every shred of evidence available. Sorry, if people are to be on the lookout for someone, isn't there a way that you can describe those people? sounds from everything you've said as if uh, you've concluded that this was a terrorist attack of some kind. Can you confirm that? I would not characterize it as such until the evidence is in, but we are pursuing every piece of evidence in, with whatever motivation behind it. Do you have any statistics on the casualties? We have some statistics on the casualties, but they are increasing every moment. Our, what we are trying to do is to make sure that we pursue every lead. What, what we have been told is that there were 550 people assigned in the building. Only 250 had been accounted for before I came in. There may be as many as 100 to 250 more people to account for. The casualty figures are climbing. 100 victims have been treated. Six children who, in the, were, who were in the day care center have been confirmed as, as dead and we are just pursuing absolutely every lead that we can. General, have there been any more threats against any other federal buildings across the country? In a situation like this, there are sometimes terribly misguided, horrible people who create copycat situations. We've responded uh, in each instance, and so far nothing has materialized. General Reno, was there any indication, any warning that anything like this could happen? Because there are conflicting reports that, not specific warnings per se, but warnings that there might be terrorist activity in the period after March. Again, I can't comment on any specific lead uh, or any any of the evidence that we have developed. Do you think there's Ms. any Reno, tie up with uh, Waco? Ms. Reno, the the current crime bill that the president has signed includes a death penalty provision. Assuming you do catch these people, will you go for that? 18 U.S.C. section 844 relates to those who maliciously damage or destroy a federal building. If there is death, uh, if death occurs, the death penalty is available and we will seek it. General Reno, any General. more uh, indication of where this device exploded? In uh, again, that would be commenting on the evidence that is being developed, and we would not want to do that in it, because to do so would could possibly hinder the investigation. General, if other governments are... General Reno, I'm sorry, on the uh, importance of this event, are we crossing a new threshold of concern about security in this country when even Oklahoma City is not safe? I think that this has been a matter of concern for all Americans any time you see acts like this around the world, and I think it is a matter that has got to be pursued with all vigor. I can't tell you whether it's a crossroads. I can tell you that any time something like this occurs, we have to do everything possible to ensure that the people who are responsible are held accountable and that we do everything we can to prevent a future of recurrence. General, General, does anyone whether or not this is a question? General, what cautions would you urge other people who work in federal buildings or live near them to take? We are working with the General Services Administration, the United States Marshal Service, and the FBI to take sensible precautions, and the federal employees who have been involved have just been wonderful. General, have you decided whether this is just a coincidence that it happened on the second anniversary of the Waco siege? Again, we are pursuing all leads. We cannot tell exactly what happened or who is responsible, and it would be better not to comment until we can conclusively talk about it. General, General, has, anyone, has anyone called to claim responsibility for this, any credible group or organization? Again, I don't think that I should comment on the evidence because to do so would hinder the investigation. You heard it was a car bomb. Again, I cannot confirm any evidentiary lead that we are pursuing because I think that would hinder the investigation. General, if uh, another government or governments uh, are found to be involved, would military retaliation be appropriate? Will it be uh, carried out? I, I don't think that we should deal with what ifs. I think we should make sure that those people who are responsible are pursued and brought to justice. Can we have a last question, please? General, uh, General the, government, the government of Israel has offered its help because it has the vast experience with this sort of thing. Do you know if we're accepting that help? We will, of course, rely on any additional resource that can possibly be involved in, and be utilized appropriately in bringing these people to justice. Thank, Thank you very you. much.
General Janet Reno with the president uh, reacting to the disaster in Oklahoma City. Janet Reno, as is her wont, will say little of the investigation. We got a bit of news. 550 people were assigned to that federal building in Oklahoma City. 250 more have yet to be accounted for. Janet Reno telling us about the extent of the operation in Oklahoma City as it builds to find those who are responsible. Four special agents are on their way now. Ordnance teams are going in. 50 more FBI agents are being sent in tomorrow. Explosives experts are being sent in. The Army and National Guard are taking part. And dog teams and robots from Tulsa, those are uh, units used to search the rubble, as we know from past experiences with earthquakes. The President of the United States stepped out first. He trembled as he spoke, and if you missed it, here's what the president had to say. The bombing in Oklahoma City was an attack on innocent children and defenseless citizens. It was an act of cowardice, and it was evil. The United States will not tolerate it, and I will not allow the people of this country to be intimidated by evil cowards. I have met with our team, which we assembled to deal with this bombing. And I have determined to take the following steps to assure the strongest response to this situation. First, I have deployed a crisis management team under the leadership of the FBI, working with the Department of Justice the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, military and local authorities. We are sending the world's finest investigators to solve these murders. Second, I have declared an emergency in Oklahoma City. And at my direction, James Lee Witt, the director of the Federal Emergency Management Agency, is now on his way there to make sure we do everything we can to help the people of Oklahoma. Sail in soon. Sam White Motor City. One beat at Southwest Freeway. Sam White. Want to see what we're celebrating at Six Flags Astro World? Here. Satisfied? No? Well, take a peek at this year's season opening. It's better than ever with all the rides and family attractions. Just think, Batman the Escape, Ultra Twister, the Texas Cyclone. Want even more? Okay. Head to any Houston area Kroger store and get a great deal with discount tickets. So don't miss the celebration. Hurry out today for fun that's close to home at Six Flags Astroworld. We can only put so many rescue workers in there, only bring so much weight in ourselves. Uh, we've got structural engineers helping us out and advising us at that, but uh, it, it's just a long, slow, tedious battle. So your problem is not that you don't have the equipment, not that you don't have enough people, but just reaching them without causing more damage. Yes, sir. The, the building is so unstable that we've got to very carefully uh, uh, make those entries and, and, and look and see if we've got those people in those areas. And this weather, which is coming in now, we've got tornado watches, that's causing some problems for you as well? Very much so. If we get any water weight on that building or we get some high winds, that'll further uh, take away from the structural integrity and we'll have to pull our crews out. Assistant Fire Chief John Hanson, thank you very much. <laughs> Dr. David Hogan is with the University of Oklahoma. He is a specialist in emergency medical services. You were there early today. Right yes, now sir. you are treating the survivors. How bad is it? Of course, the survivors are pretty badly injured. Uh, the majority of those that uh, were admitted to hospitals have uh, been admitted with severe head injuries, uh, major fractures to long bones, and uh, with abdominal and chest injuries. And, uh, so most of them are in very critical condition. So time. the problem is that some of those who are survivors might still not make it. Yes, I'm afraid so. You were there early today. In fact, you were there within just 30 minutes. What did you see? Um, carnage. It uh, looked very much like the explosion at uh, Beirut in 89. And um, I saw the best and the worst of all people. John told me a little earlier that it might take him through the night or into tomorrow to reach some of these survivors. If he gets to them, can they make it? It's unlikely if it goes much more past another 12 hours that any of the survivors are going to be uh, alive when we reach them. All right, David, thanks very much. We appreciate it, and we wish you the best of Thank luck as you go through the search. This is the situation as it stands here on the ground right now. Let's see how it happened throughout the day. Chris Wallace has been watching the day unfold. Forrest, is, Forrest as soon as officials here understood the dimensions of today's attack, they began the search for who is responsible. At first, speculation centered on the Branch Davidian cult, because today is the second anniversary of the FBI assault on their compound in Waco, Texas. 
But as the day wore on, authorities here began looking at other suspects. ABC's John McQuethy has been tracking the early stages of this investigation. John, what's the latest? Well, first of all, there has yet been no claim of responsibility for this bombing. Although if you talk to intelligence sources and to law enforcement officials, they all say in their early guess in this situation is that this particular bombing probably has roots in the Middle East. The uh, magnitude of this bombing, the way the device was placed for maximum destruction, they have seen that kind of destruction before. Now, the FBI says they're keeping all their options open. But law enforcement officials have put out an all-points bulletin looking for three men, two of which are described as having Middle Eastern origins. FBI sources say they have been tracking for a number of months various things they call Islamic radical cells in cities throughout the Southwest in the United States. And one final indicator is that the FBI, in asking for support from the U.S. military, in addition to trucks and tractors and various other things for, to get into the wreckage, they have asked specifically for 10 Arabic-speaking language specialists. Now, of all of the different things, that may be a very clear sign of where this investigation is headed, at least in the early phases. John, uh, there has been some talk. Uh, officials of the FBI and uh, ATF have talked about the size of this bomb, 1,000 to 1,200 pounds, being similar to the size and to the power of the bomb that went off in the World Trade Center. Do they see other similarities to the World Trade Center bombing? Well, it is mostly the way that the device was placed and the magnitude of the device. Those are the two things. Now, in the days ahead, they're going to try to figure out and will figure out probably in the next 24 to 48 hours what this bomb was made of. That will give them many more clues as to the, the way this was manufactured and the level of sophistication. But right now, they think it was a very sophisticated device. John, thanks. Imagine leaving for work in the morning, kissing your family goodbye, and heading off to another day at the office. The hundreds of people who work at the Alfred Murrah Federal Office Building in Oklahoma City expected just that this morning. Instead, they walked into a nightmare. Here's what we know about how the day unfolded. Victims say it sounded like a tornado or an earthquake, but this was no natural disaster. Officials say the car bomb that tore off the side of the Federal Building was the work of highly skilled terrorists and the explosion went off just after 9 a.m. Hundreds of workers were sitting down at their desks. We've got a critical. Get it out. Get that over now, there. Yeah. The bomb ripped a hole in the building, causing portions of all nine floors to collapse. Government workers told of being in an office one moment and hanging on for their lives the next. Boy, it's just like an atomic bomb went off. The ceiling went in and all the windows came in and the deafening roar then there's just dust and everything. Some of the heaviest casualties were children in a daycare center. They range from infants to preschoolers, and at least 17 of them were killed. We was bringing babies out, and some of them had glass in their head. Babies and stuff was everywhere, and I was helping get babies out, and workers and residents lived there, and it was just a mess. People was everywhere. The daycare center was on the second floor, just above where the bomb exploded. But there was carnage throughout the building. The offices of the Secret Service are on the ninth floor. Authorities say six of the 13 agents there are unaccounted for. You can see on the upper floors in one of those offices there are some people trapped up there. Many of the people who survived were unable to get out. Rescue workers tried to climb up to them, but worried that what was left of the building would collapse. We still have some people trapped that we're talking to through walls and whatnot and through floors. It's very frustrating for firefighters because there are some areas where we're reaching and touching people, but we just can't get to them. And with the explosion knocking out windows and buildings across downtown, emergency teams had to treat dozens of bystanders for cuts. Don Crisp was working as a night security guard at the YMCA across from the federal building. I, I just woke up and I was covered in glass. I didn't know what was going on. I just got out. There are some needs. The Oklahoma Blood Institute, uh, they need blood, and they particularly need O-negative blood. Rescue efforts were stalled twice when there were reports that more bombs had been found. But the FBI said later they had not come across any more explosives. They said the bomb that did go off left a crater 20 feet in diameter outside the federal building. So it had to be an extremely powerful explosive that occurred. It not only went up, it went out. I mean, you have debris that uh, 
that is in a multi-block area. Uh, this was felt over 15 miles away. There were also shock waves from the attack across the country. In Boston and several other cities, federal buildings were evacuated after bomb threats were called in, where government workers said their offices seemed to have been tampered with. On Capitol Hill in Washington, special dogs were brought in to check for bombs. Late today, President Clinton came to the White House briefing room to express the nation's outrage. The bombing in Oklahoma City was an attack on innocent children and defenseless citizens. It was an act of cowardice, and it was evil. The United States will not tolerate it. Attorney General Reno made it clear that if the perpetrators are found, punishment will be severe. The death penalty is available, and we will seek it. But what lingered today was all the damage that had been done. One rescue worker, almost overwhelmed by what he had seen, expressed what may have been a common reaction. You just would not understand. There's so much chaos up there. I just want to go home and hold my kid. Incidentally, the Prime Minister of Israel, which has had its own incidents of car bombing in the past, is offering support. Yitzhak Rabin, citing the very large and sad Israeli experience in such cases, said tonight his government stands ready to help in whatever way it can. Now back to Farah Sawyer in Oklahoma City, who's there with the mayor. Chris, this has been a devastating experience for this city, but they are pulling together. Mayor Ron Norick is with me now, and how is the city responding, Mayor? The, the city's responding uh, fantastically. We put out a call very early this morning to uh, not have the citizens come downtown. They obeyed that uh, to keep strictly for the emergency personnel. Uh, the plasma centers were flooded with people this morning. Uh, our community has pulled together the police department, the fire department, all the surrounding communities. The emergency relief services are, are all you well, need? They're, they're, all, they're all in place. Uh, we have uh, spent a lot of time uh, training and planning for an eventuality like this. Uh, obviously, you, you hope that it never happens. It, it did happen, and, uh, and we're taking care of it. What is your biggest worry at this point? The biggest worry right now is if there's anybody else that's still alive in the structure, we've got to be able to get to them as soon as possible. I'm also concerned about the rescue people that are in there. That building is not stable, and uh, so that, that's what it would be. Mayor Ron Norick, and of course the search is going to go on right on through the night and into the day. That's the way the situation is now here in Oklahoma City, Diane.